Hallelujah, brethren. Hallelujah to God. He's our Father and we appreciate His care, His kindness. Let us pray as we give thanks to Him, being mindful that He's the one who takes good care of us all. Father God in heaven, we thank you that we remain God. You bring us to the beginning of each day and you wind us up on each day. And we thank you, God, for your provisions. Thank you for your good care, precious care, your favor, your graces that are ever present. We thank you and we pray the Lord you bless us as we interact with your word as we do always because it enlightens us about what you desire us to do in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, we thank God, our Father who is in heaven. And just like our Lord Jesus Christ taught us, our Father who is in heaven, and we say, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And we always ask, give us this day our daily bread, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory belong to you. And so we appreciate him because of our Father, and he takes good care of us. I'm always mindful of that. That's why I always say it, because without him, we mean nothing. And our days are like grass, just like the Bible says. We fly away and we are diminished, but he remains forever. He is from age to age. He's the rock of ages. And so we thank God that he has enabled us to continue living on. It is our time to do our work. It's our generation to speak out God's word. It's our generation to serve him. And so when you are still able to serve, serve. When you are still able to speak his word, speak. When you are still able to do what pleases his name, do it. Because this is the time, this is the life that has given you. And so I appreciate him for the episodes that I've been having all through. They are now in tens of hundreds and we thank God that actually have moved and we have been looking at personalities in the Bible. Remember we began in Genesis, we have moved on the entire Bible and we shall continue on because we shall never finish this Bible because it is like a sea that you cannot move and finish. It's as deep, it's as high like God himself. And so we shall continue on even what at whatever time we shall continue thinking about it, we shall begin continue talking about it. Now this time, what do I come to say? I bring again, there is somebody whom we have been talking about, the most recent is Prophet Jeremiah. We have talked about prophets, we have talked about men and women that have lived their life here on earth and they are counted in this word of God, they are counted in this Bible. And so, we learn lessons from them. And so we've been talking about Jeremiah. We've been having personalities that are in Jeremiah. And now, having talked about him, we keep reading about him. I just want to pick a few popularly quoted verses. Because actually all these scriptures, and even right from the other scriptures that we've been reading, Genesis, Exodus, no, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, go on the history books up to these prophetic books. They are, they form a basis of our living. You'll find people quoting themes for their year here from this word of God. They quote, you know, they, they, they have uh, quotes, encouraging quotes. They keep quoting and they make themes, they make principles of their life from this word of God. So I just want to take a little time talking about the most popularly quoted, and I may not reach everything, but I just want to pick one, two, three, whether they will be 10, whether they will be five, but at least because companies, organizations have looked at this book and other books in the Bible and say, this year, our theme should be like this. Churches look through and pick themes. And so I just desire that we look at that because they mean a lot, they guide our doings, our programs, you know, they guide us through. And so when you pick a verse, that actually this year, this month, there are those who pick every week. There are those who pick 
every month, every year. And so we shall be moving on this, guiding our steps, guiding our work, guiding our, you know, our, our, our processes in whatever way that they are. And so this book of Jeremiah is one of those that is popularly quoted. And I just want to mention, before I mention those popularly quoted verses, that actually remember this man Jeremiah ministered, lived and ministered during difficult times of his generation. And so whatever he wrote, it was out of whatever was written about him, it was out of experience. He experienced them. He encountered situations. And so they are written here for our energizement. And so that actually, when we read, we get encouraged and it propels us to move on, to sojourn, to strengthen our feet, to strengthen our, our knees, to strengthen ourselves and we keep moving. And this is actually one of the, the most important things that we do when we interact with the word of God. And so this man, Jeremiah, the very, very first thing, I know, you know, from his call, he has many, many things that actually uh, we talk about. Many, 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 many. And so I just want to look at a few of those popularly quoted verses in the book of Jeremiah. Of course, verse 1, chapter 1, talking about the words of the Jeremiah, the sons of Hilkiah. They're talking about his words. And so be mindful that the words that you speak are usually quoted. Some of us are also known by what we do, by the words that we speak, by the actions that we exhibit. Now, as we get into this, the words of Jeremiah, the sons of Hilkiah, one of the priests who were in the Anatoth in the land of Benjamin. Now, we're talking about the words. And so... We can also take it that actually this year, this, this moment, this season, the words that we shall speak, the actions that we shall show, the works that we shall exhibit. And so I found this very, very important. But let's go down in verse 4. That now the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Don't you think that this is one of the most popularly quoted verses? All of us who are ministers, all of us who are believers, we shall quote this and we quote it many, many times. That before I was born, God knew me. Where do we derive that? We derive that from the book of Jeremiah. He speaks. He spoke that and God was speaking to him. And he did. It informs us of our being. And by the way, those who preach against abortions, those who preach against, you know, they will I mean this is a verse that actually that teaches us, that shows us how we go about it, how we go about life. And so this is one of the most popularly quoted verses in this book that before I was born, before you were born, God knew you. You may be going through, I don't, I don't know, whatever situation. And you know, God knows me. And he didn't just know me from the time I was born. Even before I was in the womb of my mother, God knew me. And so this is one of those very important ones. And so live your life knowing that God knows, knew you. God knows you right from the time of conception. He knew how you were to be. He knew he, he knew your frame. Pray the Lord that actually you would be you and not anybody else. And the reason why I prayed in it, that actually nobody can be another. It is you whom God knew from the time of conception. So we have that one. And then you move on. This chapter one has very many of the verses that are popularly quoted. And then um, when he could not speak, he said, I'm too young. God said, I will give you the words that you will Speak, because okay, many times we also give excuses. Now, when time comes and there is an excuse, you cannot speak, you cannot do what the Bible in Jeremiah gives you what to say. It's actually verse 6, uh, verse 7, and verse 8. It says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you. Pray the Lord. And so we quote this. And so if we only, as we talk about the most popular quoted, are you in fear? Are you going to speak? You don't have the words to speak? 
I've seen preachers who stand at the podium and they say, well, I don't have anything to say, but God is going to give me. And this is that do not be afraid. I will be with you. Pray the Lord, brethren. And so this is actually, I found this very, very important, very, very informative. And so you can read chapter one entirely and you'll see that um, it informs us very, very much. And remember verse 10, that see, I have set this day over, I have set you this day over the nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Now you'll find this as your, 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 your theme, my theme, you know, in your life and say this year, I am set to build and to plant, pray the Lord. Now, as I go to school, a young man says, or a young woman says, as I go, I am going to settle down, to plant, to build, and to plant. And so we quote that. I so I just wanted to say, there are many things in this book that can propel us to move on, to sojourn on. And even when times are difficult, you say, I am set to build and to plant. So you can read on. You can pick many more from there. Now let us just roll down to chapter 6. I just want to pick something from chapter 6, verse 16. And here is another quotation. Of course, actually, you can say that we will quote everything from chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, but I'm talking about those that are popularly quoted. Now, verse 16 of chapter 6, the Bible says, Thus says the Lord, Stand by the roads and look, and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it and find rest for your souls, pray the Lord. But they said, we will not walk in it. Now, many times I've preached about this. Many people have preached about this. And one of them that is popular quoted is this, stand at the crossroads. You know, we are living in the times where confusion is at its peak. Falsehoods are in its peak. And modernization with its good things and modernization with lots of evil that has come. Because actually people want to be modern, they disregard everything that is in the past. But listen to me. This is the word of the Lord, actually, which we keep quoting many times, one of us. That actually the past, yes, could be having its bad, its wrongs. And... Some people said that actually the ancients are ancient and there's nothing good that they can offer. But listen, there could be something that actually God is speaking to us about how the past times, how things were being done in the past, the respect that was, the honor that was, the hard work that was, the genuineness that was. And those are the things that actually he's talking about. Counterfeits too much these days. Counterfeit money counterfeit religious affiliations, counterfeit churches, counterfeit businesses, counterfeit things are not right. And so when someone quotes this, they actually stand at the crossroads and look and ask for the ancient paths. How was it done? Genuine. In the marriage, people standing and people sticking to their marriage vows. Yes, we don't say that they need to have problems. We need to not say that they did have challenges, but listen to me, that actually, you know, people were patient, people were persevering, people were, you know. Now, there are certain things that actually we have to look back and say ancient things, but they were giving glory to God. So this is one of them that actually is popular quoted, where the good way is and walk in it where the good way is and walk in it and you'll find rest for your souls. So friends, may God help us as we keep looking through. There are those which can be like catch words. There are those who can be like, you know, catch verbs, catch phrases that actually can propel us to move on. And so we look back and say, here, we. this is how our ancestors were doing. This is how our forefathers were doing. Yes, we keep 
we pick our lessons, we learn from them. The reason why this word of God is saying, look and pick, look at the, the way it was done properly. Many times we are going our way, doing wrong things, saying wrong things, acting wrong ways, because we think that's modernity, when it is actually driving us away from God our Father. And so in the moment actually these people were doing this, they were driven away, and indeed, Prophet Jeremiah proclaimed, exile proclaimed, you know, and they were driven out of the nation because they were not considering the good way. So even during our time, friends, let us consider a good way and walk in it. I appeal to you, consider a good way and walk in it. Whoever you are, consider a good way and walk in it. And I talk to myself and say, may I consider a good way and walk in it. And everyone else, consider a good way and walk in it. So this is actually important, brethren. And so, taking delight in that. And so another one, let us roll down. Chapter 9, chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. This is one of them that I actually found in Jeremiah and popularly quoted also 9, 23, 24. And I will just read because um, the time may not be enough to explain everything. Look, chapter 9, verse 23. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. Can you imagine? It's actually, it's balancing. You have your riches? Yes. You are, you, are, you are wise? Yes. Are you mighty? Yes. But the Bible warns that don't boast. Don't boast. Because boasting is a relative of pride. And the Bible talks about, we have ever talked about it. Yes. Pride goes before a fall. I saw this one is one of them. You know, very, very important. But in verse 24, but let him who boasts, pray the Lord, let him who boasts, boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, declares the Lord. Is it boasting? Is it? Do it in the Lord. Do it in the Lord. But not to do it the other way. Let him boast, boast in this that he knows, he understands and knows me. So this is what the Bible is teaching us. And this can, can be one of the catchwords that are spoken uh, about uh, Jeremiah, the man that actually spoke during his time. Can I get on to chapter 17, verse 9? Listen to me, that actually, this is one of the most popularly known. Jeremiah 17, we shall begin from 7. Jeremiah 17, look there and see, 17, 7. One of the most popular quoted here, you'll see, let me read and then you'll see that blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Now you can pick that one for the year, for the month, for the week. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, who trusts, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes for its leaves remain green and it is not anxious in the year of drought for it does not cease to bear fruit. Who does not like that? I think I enjoy it. That blessed is the person who trusts in the Lord. You and me pray the Lord that we trust in the Lord. But look at verse. Now you can pick seven and eight, put them there. That actually, they are very, very important and popularly quoted. But look at verse 9. I know I've ever quoted it. The Bible says that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand the heart? But verse 10, in as much as you may not know what I'm thinking and I may not know what you are thinking, 
Verse 10, that I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Pray the Lord. And so we have quoted this many times and here it is in chapter 17, verse 9. Now, verse 7 and 8, a tree planted by the water's side. And there are many other quotations that you can look at. Do you remember Psalm 1? About a tree planted by the riverside? Psalm 1 verse 3. How about Hosea chapter 14 verses 5 to 8? Talking about the tree planted by the riverside. And there are many, many, many others that actually I pray for you that you will be like a tree that is planted by the riverside. That your leaves, your leaves will remain green. We agonize a lot. We trouble a lot. You know, we agonize a lot. Peace disappears, but a tree planted by the riverside. And so chapter 17 is very, very key and very, very important for you and me. Now listen to me. This one, maybe you might have quoted it today or the other day. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. Now this one is the most, I think, everyone, young and old, you're here. Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. But let's see. 29, 11 verses. 11, 29, 11 verses. 11 to 29, 11 to 13. Now, the Bible says, For I know the plans I have for you. Right? Declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. Can you read on please? Pray the Lord. Now, this, I just thought, actually this is one of them that made me think that I should look for those popular quoted verses. And Jeremiah 29, 11, read on 12. Read on 13 and continue on. So friends, this is very, very important. And people have picked this as their themes, as their principle in their life and things like that. And so God has better plans for you. God has better plans for me. Seek him and you'll find him. And he says, seek me and you'll find me. So Jeremiah was speaking these things. So pray the Lord that this is important for you and it's important for me. Now, can we go on and put something else also? Now, in Jeremiah chapter 31, 31, 3 to 4, there's something else also, which actually quoted also very, very often. And 31, 3, 4, and the Bible says, the Lord appeared to him uh, from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Is that it? This is what he says. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Verse 4, again, I will build you and you shall be built. O virgin Israel, again, you shall adorn yourself with tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Pray the Lord. Read on. And so this is one of them. People who want to revive themselves, they will just, that, that the Lord saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And I thank God that he loves us with an everlasting love. Many times we deviate, we dive and go away, but our God loves us with an everlasting love. He loves us with an everlasting love. And so this one is very, very important. It says, I shall plant you again. I shall, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains. And you know, he's a God of revival. He's a God of renewal. He's a God that brings back. And so this is one of the most popular quoted ones as well. Can we read on also? 31, 31. This is about the covenant. 31, 31. And it talks about a new covenant. And this is what it says also. Behold, the days are coming. Declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant that I made with the ancestors on the day when I took 
them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke. Now, you see, God promises that I will make a new covenant. And we are people of a new covenant. Quoted very, many, many times. So listen to me. That actually, this is important for you. This is important for, you, for me and for you. Now, we may not finish, but I just opened this to remind us that in the Bible, there are words that were spoken. There are actions that we see by the men and women in here. Now, what do we learn from them? Popularly quoted, popularly spoken, and they form a basis of our guidance in this land as we are still moving on. You and I. Now, let me end with Jeremiah 33, verse 3 to 6. So just reading, and then we shall pray and go away. 33, verses 3 to 6. And the Bible says, the Bible says, and in verse, verse 3, um, we shall just read on, and then uh, we shall end there. And the Bible says, that says the Lord, Call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and hidden things. I like that. Great and hidden things that you have not known. Call to me and you do that. For that says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the houses of this, of this city. Those, now read on. Hidden, hidden, hidden things. I thank the Lord. And actually we have read this many, many times. That the Lord reveals great and hidden things. And so we do not know what tomorrow holds. We do not know what tomorrow holds. Next year holding. The next hour holding. But the Lord knows. So we call upon him. And he will show us great and hidden things. Great and mighty things. So friends, I pray the Lord for this book. And Jeremiah is one of the prophetic books that we have been reading. And I want to ask you to continue Picking one, two, three things, and they will encourage you. Move on, move on. One day, another day, another year, another month. And may God bless us all. And so that we keep living on for him. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.